For today's market report, I made charts and graphs. Really help if I could get like some charts and graphs made up. Could you help me with that? Honey, this is the graphics department. We can make as many graphs, as many charts, in as many colors, on as many kinds of paper as you want. Oh, Fran. Oh, Franny, Franny, Fran. Oh, we are gonna have some fun. Hey, everybody, it's Tristan Eamon with Mindful Living Realty, a realtor right here in Rapid City, South Dakota, the gateway to the Black Hills. It's time to talk about what happened in the Rapid City real estate market during the summertime. Now, there's lots of talk around about the housing market across the nation, across the media. But as I've said before, Rapid City is a lot of times different from what you see in the national media. But I thought I should put together charts and graphs so that you can see for yourself. And it's not just this realtor trying to tell you to buy a house in Rapid City. So first off, let's get into what has happened the past few months in the Rapid City real estate market. And of course, I'm not really worried about how things were from last year, but I'm looking more about what's happening month to month to month to give us an idea of how things are going. What has happened since the interest rates really skyrocketed. So in May of this year, a single family home, the average sold price was $365,000 about. In June of 2022, that price jumped up to $372,000, just under that. And then in July, jumped down to 37500 So we started wondering at this point, well, there it is, prices are coming down. Are we going to start seeing things really decrease in price? Let's check out August 2022, just over $375,000. So there we see prices jumped back up again. And remember, these are closed prices. So the August closings are the ones that are put in a contract back in June, roughly, May, maybe June, maybe some in July if they were quick enough a close. So we see that even in that time frame where the interest rates were starting to rise a little bit and we were having a little bit of a housing market panic going on, we're seeing so far that prices in the Rep City area have not come down significantly. Quick side note, we're gonna consider 2020 to spring of 2022 as just a weird anomaly. That's not anything that's been normal in our area, not something that's gonna continue, but we've got used to it for the past couple of years. So now things that are, things have changed and actually kind of going back to normal now all of a sudden we're like, oh no, things are, no, they're just going back to normal, which is okay. We can't sustain that this amount of growth that fast for too long. So just because your home didn't sell in a week like it has in the past couple of years, doesn't mean that the whole thing has gone to crap. It just means we're going back to what's normal and healthy. Now we are seeing price reductions. I'm seeing a lot of emails now where it's like to back to 2019 days where I'm getting new listing emails from other agents, price reduction emails from other agents. I even saw a flyer box the other day. That's something we haven't done in a couple years. But the right properties and the right areas and the right prices, they sell quickly. We even had one in a not the best area of town, right at the $220,000 mark, sold in a day back in June. And it sold for full price. I actually was quite surprised. I was telling the sellers, okay, things are changed now. We've got a higher interest rate. The buyers have slowed down a little bit. So expect maybe if we don't get it sold on the first weekend, you know, be okay with that. It might take a few weeks. We'll see what happens. So they were overjoyed to get their price in a day. Just this past weekend, we were in negotiations on a fixer upper on a property that had been on the market for about 30 days. It did need quite a bit of work all the way around to make sure that it was insurable and livable. After we had submitted an offer, we heard, oh, by the way, we got an offer and we got two other people that are looking at it and thinking about presenting an offer. So you never know when things are gonna come back alive on a property. Now, historically, in a Rapid City real estate market, in spring, we hit our big time. That's our busy time frame between, and it can be, it can start as early as February 15th, it can start as low as May. I've seen both, both happen. It depends on the weather, how things are going. A lot of different things factor into that, but it's always our busiest time in the spring. Summertime comes and we finally get out to be able to go enjoy outside. And we have kind of a summer slump where three months is not quite as busy, especially around July 4th, it seems like. And then when in August comes and you got the rally and then you got the fair, uh, then kids are back at school. So it kind of really ends up being a little bit of slower month time in those time frames. Then September hits back and we are back at work and we're back in school and we go back to normal for a few months. Holidays come, we start slowing down and then it really slows down through the winter time until that spring market hits again. Of course, every year is different depending upon how cold it is, all these different things. So it seems like what we're doing here is also getting back to normal. This summer, we have seen a little bit more of a slowness kind of happening through this summertime. So here we are now in September, things are maybe starting to pick up a little bit, but we'll see what happens because it's also an election year. And typically during election years, people are kind of waiting to see what happens until after all that settles out before they start finalizing their plans. Enough with the charts and the graphs. Now this morning, I went into our Black Hills MLS system and grabbed all this data directly from the information that, that they provide. So it's not me playing with data, trying to make things work. No, this is the stuff that's provided by our MLS system. 
And uh, so it's all, all the same. So I want to make sure everything kind of works in the same scenario. I went back all the way to 2005, not only to give us some historical data, but also so I can show you how we fared during that 2008 market crash that happened in the nation. Okay, you ready? Let's do it. All right, let's check out this first graph here, the average residential yearly sold price in the Rapid City area. And this includes Rapid City, down Sheridan Lake Road, Blackhawk, Somerset, Box Helder, but not towns like Sturgis and down in Hermosa. So it is Rapid City and the surrounding areas in this data. So here we go. 2005, average sold price, $161,000. Come up to, well, I'm not sure what happened here between 2006 and 2007, but we had quite an increase to 187. And then comes the market crash. Well, we went down to $179,000 and then down to 175 and then went back up so that by 2012, we were back where we were back in 2007. This little sump that we have right here is 6.87% change. That's it. While the rest of the country was hitting 40, 50, 60%, we went down 6.87%. And from that low point in 2009, you can see everything has gone one way, and that is up. The next chart here is days of market. And as you can imagine, this is pretty much what you'd expect. Higher days in market during these slower times, and all the way down to here, 2021 last year, where the average days of market was 16 days on market. And that, of course, is because of the inventory that we had or didn't have in that year. Here's the next chart showing the active listings as of December 31st to kind of give you an idea, give us a baseline of how many active listings were year by year. At a high point, 800 some listings, all the way down to 300 the past couple of years, which of course was the story of the past couple of years. Low inventory, high buyer demand equals higher and higher prices. All right, now we're gonna switch it up and go to a bar. This is a bar graph describing my favorite pies. This one shows the residential price change from the sold data that we just looked at. Again, what happened here in 2006? I don't know, must have been me joining the real estate force. I don't know, so 13% increase. And then here comes the market crash of that 6.87% 6, right there. Then we start gaining every year, we're gaining a little bit. And you can see here, we're always have some kind of a positive gain and it's always just really in the single digits until 2020. And all of a sudden then we're shooting up 12, 15%. Since 2019, the sold price average has gone up 28.5%. And since 2005, that percentage change has been just about 101%. Now, maybe you're asking, what about the foreclosures? There's like a whole bunch more of those, aren't there? Obviously, there are since there haven't been any foreclosures in the past couple of years because of forbearance. But what about all those people coming off forbearance? Are we suddenly going to have a glut of homes on the market from foreclosure causing an issue? Let's take a look at this chart here. So you can see here all the way back, what is it, 19, starts in 1980. And you can see the amount of foreclosures rise. All of a sudden, boom, here we have the housing crash where those foreclosures are just huge. All the way back down to 2022, we're almost lower than back in 1980. Now I realize this chart is back in May of 2022. It's the most recent one that I could find, but let's talk about those forbearance numbers. According to this chart right here, put together in March 31st of 2022, you can see 37% of them paid in full. 44.6%, they figured it out. Only 18% of the forbearance foreclosures are in trouble. And that's nationwide. So you can imagine in Rapid City area, back in 2008, we had maybe 10 or 15% foreclosures on the market. How many of that will be in our market? So what that will do actually is provide great inventory for our market, especially for those people that have the money to be able to fix them up and resell them. So what I'm trying to do by showing you this information, by showing this easy to understand format, is to show that things in Rapid City do not match the national world. I've got agents in other parts of the country putting together videos that said, prices are dropping, prices are dropping. And I can't say that. So I'm not gonna put a video saying, yeah, prices are dropping because I can't see huge price reductions happening in our area based on the data that I've shown you and what I've seen happen currently in the Rapid City real estate market. Now, are crazy things happening in the world? Of course, inflation's crazy. You've got destabilization over here in other countries. We don't know what's gonna happen with the interest rate. That keeps going up. I mean, 6% might not be a bad number historically, but compared to last year when it was three, that, that really hurts. Plus the housing prices are 28% higher from a couple years ago. So all these factors in play could price some people out of the market and cause other people to look at things and say, hey, let's kind of wait and see what happens before we start investing more of our money into uh, a real estate market. That being said, historically, we have always had a very stable market. Even what, the crash in 2008, the pandemic, both those are pretty crazy things that we weathered through very well. So if buying a property in the Rapid City area is something that you're interested in doing, it might be better to do it sooner rather than later. Because once we hit our busy time again in spring, if we don't have a sudden increase of inventory and homes available, those prices are just gonna keep going up. 
Now you've got to make your own decisions regarding buying a property in Rapid City or selling your house in Rapid City. If you're planning on selling your house, we do have to make sure that we go back to where things were back in 2019. Just because you put it on the market for whatever price that you want doesn't mean we're actually going to get that sold as we could maybe a year ago. Now you're going to have to spend more time fixing it up, have to spend a little bit more time on marketing, and it's just a little more of a patience game waiting for the right buyers to come along since there are a few of them in the market. But technically, we still are in a seller's market. So while we might not be able to get your home sold for as fast as we were able a couple years ago, and while we might not be able to get the highest price based upon multiple offers and higher over asking price offers, we should still be able to get your home sold in a reasonable amount of time. If you're a buyer, I do understand with everything going on right now that making these decisions might not be something that you're quite interested in doing. Maybe you want to wait and see kind of where things level out until after the elections, etc., etc. I wanted to make sure that you had as much information as possible, you know, presented in an easy to see format so you can make the best decision for you and your family. So what do you think? Does that make sense to everybody? If not, leave a comment below. I'll try to answer that for you. Thanks again for watching. Have an amazing day. And remember, love where you live. Based on recent trends, I have also made a projection chart. And look, huge spike in interest coming. And this isn't just some dead cat bounce. This is big, sustainable growth over the long term.